Hey friends, hope you're having a great day wherever you're tuning in from. We just wanna say welcome to Church 2911 online. If it's your first time tuning in, we wanna extend a very special welcome and thank you to you. You could be anywhere, but we know that you're here watching this. And we believe it's not an accident. We believe God has something in store for you today. If you wanna check out who we are, get connected, or even follow along with today's sermon notes, you can do so below in the link in the description. It's also on church2911.com. Pastor Brent Hand is actually going to be bringing the second installment of our sermon series called An Invitation Today. You can follow along in the sermon notes down below. We hope you will. Let's jump back into some worship together.
it's a crazy world up there right now, am I right? And just where we're at right now with the way that media and uh, is consumed, it's hard to know who to trust. It's hard to know what to believe. And I don't know about you, but I, there's something in me that just wants to, to go back to a simpler time, right? We wanna go back to, uh, to a time where things were a little bit easier. Uh, but, but where do you go? When do you go back? When were the good old days, right? Because even back then you probably longed for something you know, simpler than that. And so you end up just basically wanting to go all the way back to childhood, maybe? All the way back to where uh, things were a lot simpler. I mean, the difference between right and wrong were pretty clear, uh, as clear as night and day. Uh, authority figures, you, you kind of felt like you knew who to respect, who to trust. And, you know, you never believed that someone would take advantage of you or cheat you, right? But somewhere along the way, we became a little less naive, right? We, we, we learned some good things, you know, we, we, maybe through school or whatever. We've learned some good things about the world. But we also maybe learned some, some bad things about the world, right? We learned just, just how horrible people could be, uh, how corrupt people could be. We learned, you know, how unfair life can be sometimes. And we learned that all stories don't always end up with a happy ending. But did we go too far? I, I think sometimes even when we need to believe in something, we've, we have trouble believing, you know, because as a society... We're growing more and more cynical. We're growing more untrusting of one another. We're growing more and more skeptical. You know, we're, we've, we've lost faith in God. We've lost faith in one another. In a lot of ways, we've lost faith in ourselves. And I think this, this trend of not believing isn't one that we can follow as Christians. I mean, another word that we even use to describe, you know, to be described as Christians, a lot of times people will say, call Christians believers. I mean, that's kind of what we're known for. We're known for believing, and that's, that's what we should be about, is about believing. Other than being raised from the dead, probably the miracle that Jesus is, you know, most famous for is walking on water. And I think sometimes, though, we forget that he wasn't alone in that miracle. He didn't just walk on the water by himself. But Peter also joined him out on the water that night in the middle of a storm. Now, Peter wasn't the most well-educated person. He wasn't the wisest disciple. Uh, he didn't make the, the smartest decisions or say the, the smartest things. He, he wasn't the, the perfect example of what it means to follow Jesus by any stretch of the imagination. But that night, he looked at Jesus as Jesus walked on the water and said, Jesus, if that's you, let me walk out on the water with you. Now, is that a reasonable request? Is that something that, that anybody with any amount of reason would, would suggest that you, you try is to walk on water? No, but that night, because of his faith, because he believed, he was able to walk out on the water to Jesus. And Jesus looked at Peter. He looked knowing, you know, knowing Peter, knowing his mistakes, knowing uh, his shortcomings, knowing that one day, the, day, the night before Jesus was going to die, that Peter would be one that would deny him, that would say he didn't even know Jesus. He looked and he saw Peter and he saw all this, but he looked past it. And he said, Peter, come on, take a walk with me, right? He saw that and he, he believed in Peter. It's not just that, that Peter believed in Jesus, but Jesus believed in Peter. And that's what Jesus does. He looks past our mistakes, past our flaws, and he sees us as we are. And he says, come on. He believes in us, and so we should believe in ourselves. We should trust that God knows what he's doing, that he's up to something in our lives, that he's not through with us yet, that we're here for a reason. And we should step out on that faith because, because he believes in us enough. He believes in us, and he loves us enough to die for us. And that was the true miracle of the cross. Not just that he died and came back to life, but that he died in our place, that he died for people like you and people like me, people that didn't deserve it, that can't do anything to deserve it. But he died so that that, that rift that was between man and God, that it could be put back together. He died so that he could have a relationship with us. He, he died because he loved us that much and he believes in us. And if that's true, then what could truly be impossible? If he can fix that that rift that's between him and us, if he can, he can bring us back together, then, then what can he not do? What's too hard for him? 
if he would die to, to claim us as his own, to make us his children, then, then what, what would he not do for us, right? I mean, if he loved us at our darkest, then, then who could be beyond the reach of his grace? If, if he defeated death, what enemy could stand up against him? When Jesus gets involved, are there truly any hopeless cases? To follow Jesus is to believe the impossible. In, in a world of uncertainty, in a world of, of where, where no one's really sure how things are going to turn out, who should be more optimistic than Christians, than people who, who know that ultimately how things are going to turn out? Uh, how, how can we not be optimistic that no matter how bad things get, we know how the story ends? We should be believing the best. We should be uh, vo the voices of our optimism in, the, in these times. We should be uh, light in the darkness right now. We should be believing the best, uh, not just for ourselves, but for others too. Because to, to follow Jesus is to believe that God is in control, that he is, he is up to something, you know, that he is, he's doing something. He's making things better. He wants to make things better. And if we're living a life that that has already given up, that has already lost hope, then how can, we, how can we truly be followers of Jesus? So I want to ask you a question, and I really want to ask you a question, okay? I don't want to just ask it and, and you to just hear it. I want you to answer it, okay? I want you to try to find the answer, not, not someone else's answer. I want you to find your answer for this question, okay? Where have you given up, okay? Who have you given up on? What, what are the places where you've you stop dreaming. What are the places where you've settled, where you've said, you know what, this is just as good as it's going to be? What things that you used to pray for that have you stopped praying for and just, just written off as, as impossibilities? How, how have you begun to live in a way that, that doesn't reflect that God is able to do all things? Because I want you to know the cross is an invitation to believe again. Now, I'm not saying that God is giving you a blank check, you know, to just write in whatever you want. But there are some things that you know that God wants to do in your life, some things he wants to deliver you from, some, some ways he wants to heal you uh, physically, spiritually, some, some things he wants to do to take care of you, to bring stability to your life, some things he wants to do in your life to help you be a positive influence on the people that are in your household, the people that are in your friend groups, the people that, that, that inhabit your life. And he wants you to be a, a positive influence on the world in general. But he can't do any of that if you've already given up. So have you given up? What, what are the ways that you've given up? I want you to consider this, your invitation, to believe again, to, to step out again, and to believe like, like Peter, and, and to step out into something that maybe doesn't seem all that reasonable, but you know that God is calling you, that, that miracles are, are still possible, that, that you can walk and you can see amazing things that are only possible through God. Things that you thought could never happen, happen. This is your invitation to believe again. So here's what I know. God does the impossible. He's done it in my life. I'm sure he's done it in your life, but he's not through yet. He wants to do the impossible, not just in our lives. He wants to do it in other people's lives too. And he wants to use you and me to do it. So let's believe today. Let's believe that he's going to. All right? He already wants to. He wants to, to reach people that don't know him yet. He wants to help people who are hurting. He wants to, to, to bring food and shelter to those that, that need it. Right? He, he wants to heal the sick. He, he wants those things to happen. But he wants to use us to do it. So let's believe that today. Let's, let's pray and pray for those impossible things to happen but let's not let it in there. Let's step out, and this week, let's find ways to go and live as if we really do believe that God wants to do impossible things in our lives, okay? And if, if you today, if, if you're hearing this for the first time, you're hearing about that rift between God and man, and you felt that in your life, and you feel, how could that be brought back together? That's, that, that happens through Jesus. And all you have to do to, to follow Jesus and to find yourself back connected with God is to believe in Jesus and, and to, to confess that with your mouth and to tell people, hey, I've made a decision to follow Jesus. 
So as I pray today, just pray with me. And if, and if you pray that prayer, you're a new creation in Christ. If you believe that, that Jesus is your Savior and, and you, you trust Him and you begin to live that life to follow Him and you confess that you know Him, then the past is over. The, the, the ways of yesterday are gone. And you have a bright future. And so I'll, this is your invitation to believe in something greater for tomorrow. So let's pray right now that God would help all of us believe for bigger things and to live that out this week. God, I thank you for believing in us, for believing that we are capable of doing impossible things for you, God. And I pray right now that any way that we have we have shut the door to you in our lives, that we have decided that, that some things are just not ever going to happen, no matter how hard we know that you want to, to see those things happen. God, I pray right now that you would open those doors, that you would help us see the ways that you, you want to, to do the impossible in our lives and the lives of others, and you want to use us to do it, God. And I pray right now for, for whoever at home right now is, is sitting there and they're hearing this and they're, they're deciding to, to follow you for the first time, God. I pray that you would help them know that, that yesterday is over, God, that, that the future is bright and that, that you have them in, in your hands, God, and you're going to take care of them, God. No matter how bad life looks, God, that you still have them in your hands. And God, I pray this week is as we, we you know, turn off this video and we go on and go through our lives, God, I pray that, that you, would, you would encourage us to live like people who believe, that you would not let us uh, become skeptical and doubtful and untrusting with God, but that we would we would live as people who believe and that have hope and who have a bright future in store, God. And I thank you once again for believing in us and believing that we're capable of doing the impossible for you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Such a great reminder. Hang on to that belief, to believe in yourself. We believe in you. God believes in you. If you want to connect with us, you can reach us, contact us via text. That's 205-476-2911. You can comment below, or if you're not already, follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. Hit the notification bell, subscribe to the channel. We want to stay connected with you and help you grow and hold on to that belief together. Have a great day.